It's raining in Germany too, huh? Oh, wow. Hey, Brenda. Well, today we're going to watch the COVID results. And I thought that I'm going to do this too. I'm, I'm going to play this first, the COVID results, right? Then we're going to watch Erica's testimony, then Guth's testimony. Then we're going to replay the COVID results just in case people come in late and so they don't miss it all, right? Because there were people here yesterday that may not have been able to get in today. Sydney, Australia. How cool is that? I will. I, Warrior Woman, I have always wanted to go to Sydney. Grape stuff is coming in from Alaska. Shonda said, Grounds. Malibu, California. Nice. All right, well, let's watch these COVID results, you guys, and see what we have here. Mr. Brooks, I was provided with information that your test result was hand-delivered to you, folded. Did you receive that? Uh, I was made aware of, of my test. I didn't look at it yet, so. Do you have it with you? It is. It's in my paperwork somewhere. All right, I need you to... Uh, locate it and open it up, please. Um, may I ask the reason why that would be? Mr. Brooks, you raised this issue yourself, and I'd like to know um, the result. I would, too, but I was kind of in the middle of preparing for my defense. so I... Mr. Brooks, find the piece of paper and open it up and read it, please. Your Honor, I don't consent to being talked to in that fashion. Your lack of consent is noted for the record. Please find the piece of paper, open it up, and please read it. I will Look, not consent to that, Your Honor. Or that, do I that's paused that, stare. Honor? I do not. Mr. Brooks, then I'm going to advise the Sheriff's Department to find the piece of paper and hand it to me so that I can read it. Yeah. So that those are your two options. What would be the basis for that, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, this is an issue that you raised, and I need to bring it to finality and know what the test result is. Okay, with all due respect, it was uh, a motion that I raised. All right, um, I'm gonna clear the courtroom. We're gonna go off the record and uh, we're gonna find that piece of paper and I'm going to address it when that's done. <laughs> it was like, what, huh? All right, so she's gonna find the piece of paper. Hang on, let's forward on. And she, there she is. Excuse everyone from the courtroom, take a recess so that the test result could be obtained and if necessary by reasonable force. Um, it's my understanding there was some type of situation or altercation between Mr. Brooks and the deputies. Um, ultimately though, I think he was taken into the bullpen 
He was brought back out, but it was very clear to me that he was upset. Um, I think understandably so, uh, but um, I needed to make a record of what was being done, uh, including that I have obtained the test result uh, so that there's an accurate record in this case uh, related to the motion that was raised previously by uh, Mr. Brooks. I want Mr. Brooks to know that I am not um, him from uh, when the jurors are brought back in. It was just simply because he was upset. Um, he was um, very loud when I walked into the courtroom before going on uh, back on the record. Um, he was uh, yelling about his constitutional rights being violated. Um, I advised him that if there was any type of use of force that he wanted to complain about, he could certainly do that through the proper channels uh, with the sheriff's department, but just given his state of agitation and my need to make a record, um, I had him taken to the other courtroom. He is currently muted. I do not intend to go forward uh, with additional testimony. Ultimately, I'm gonna take an early lunch break because of this, um, but I will make a record of the following. I have the result. Um, I am going to scan it, have my clerk scan it, it will be filed as confidential, though. It won't be available to the public, uh, but I, it's there for appellate purposes, but I can confirm that the test result for COVID-19 was negative. And again, I required uh, the Sheriff's Department to provide that result to me, um, and it was, and it will remain under seal. I realize I'm disclosing that result, but I feel obligated to do that given the motion that was raised two days ago by uh, Mr. Brooks. Again, I do intend to take an early lunch, uh, so that will hopefully give Mr. Brooks an opportunity if he so chooses to review the result himself. It was put in front of him. I did see that he either shoved it or tossed it or just dismissed it. It looked like it went on the floor. Uh, when it was put in front of him, but we'll certainly have the deputies give that to him again. During the recess for lunch, uh, Mr. Brooks will also be given the opportunity to change into street clothes if he so chooses. But when we come back, he will be in this courtroom. I agree. Uh, Mr. Brooks was making a couple of statements about how he was abiding by the rules and being respectful, things of that nature. I agree. He's done an excellent job while in court here this morning. He's been respectful of the rules. Um, he made some um, early on. I let him you know, make his con uh, objections or lack of consent. Um, he did that respectfully. Um, when I said I was moving on, he generally was able to do that. We were able to get through two witnesses. He was able to follow along, ask cogent, I agree, clear, Brenda. Um, responsive and articulate objections he was able to elicit uh information what i find interesting on this part you guys is that he starts bawling and boohooing after she commends him for the way the good things that he did and i know it was a build up from the erica thing but still i just feel like it was all about him you know what i mean nation from the witnesses um regarding either their memory their credibility um, and other things. Um, generally speaking, he's um, been able to competently uh, represent himself and provide, uh, again, solid cross-examination this morning. So I'm going to give him an opportunity to hopefully settle back in and to come back here um, when we return from lunch. So with that, we are in recess. Uh, probably come back at one o'clock since it's only 11 30 and we'll take the full 90 minutes for lunch today all right thank you everyone thank you all right i'll let you guys relish in this moment because i know y'all like to watch him cry this is the only time he really lost it though oh, let's go back and watch it a little hopefully bit more settle, hopefully settle back in and to come back here um when we return from lunch and why so was he crying that, because it was about himself recess, uh, probably come back at one o'clock since it's only 11 30 and we'll take the full 90 minutes for lunch today all right thank you everyone thank you okay let's see yeah 
I don't think it was about the bailiffs, though. I think this is what I this is what I believe. He had just been okay. So prior to that happening, they had done the testimony with Erica, so he'd seen her for the first time in a while, right? So that was emotional to him. Then Guth got up and like slammed him down because Guth is the one that was dealing with Erica. So that really pissed him off. Then comes back and he's like, I'm not going to show you my COVID results. And it was like, it was like, it was like a domino effect for him. And I believe that's why he lost it because he knew it was as if right then and there, this is where he realized it's done. It's over. I thought I could get her to show me some love from the stand. She didn't. She's turning against me. Everything's falling apart. I'm going to jail for the rest of my life. This is it. That's just what I believe. All right. With all that being said, now let's go back to Erica's testimony at the start of the day. Thank you, Nancy. Y'all always remember to say that. I forget. <laughs> yeah, Warrior Woman. It's like he felt the world was against him at that point. He's like, he realized he didn't have uh, anything. Anything. And it and those were real tears. Yes, Miss Santana. But they were about himself. <laughs> yeah, Julie. Only for himself. I think that it was actually someone in his, and I, and I, y'all don't get me wrong, but it was someone in his life finally telling him that he had done something right or he was doing something good. And I know that's strange to say that, but he probably doesn't get that a lot because he's so damn mean. I don't know. Oh, poor guy. So I'm going to send you this email. I just need the cases printed off. I don't want to interrupt uh, with printing here. Or do you want to send it to the? Just I'm not going to send it. I that, I'd have to search for it. So. Me me me. <laughs> Sounds good. I don't know if he was Tina Marie. I don't think he was given any much praise. But that's a great idea. Let's I think Dawn worked all the time. Store. And we can we can have Andy go and grab it. make her wait yeah it's like he, he realized he can't and likely he can't sell erica and make her wait more yeah he wanted to be able to get that loss of control was probably huge in his life if you think about it it's been there since what at least 15 plus years right ripple effect r really is yep you can be seated when you come in Yes, exactly, Warrior Woman. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Welcome back. Have a seat, and I'll make sure you all, looks like you all have your writing materials uh, to take notes if you so choose. For the record, um, I have received exhibits one, three, and five. With that, the state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state calls Erica Patterson. Thanks, Bluesy. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is upper riser and to my right. When you get there, please raise your right. My clerk, Teresa, who's standing over here, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Okay. Erica Patterson, E-R-I-K-A-P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N. Right, thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Patterson. How are you doing today? I'm, think, I'm fine, thank you. Sorry. All right. um, can you tell us, do you know a man by the name of Daryl Brooks? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I'd ask that the court uh, have Mr. Brooks 
temporarily removed his mask. Mr. Brooks, you're advised to remove your mask, please. Thank you. Just yeah, look how heavy. See Daryl Lewis in the courtroom today. Yes, I do. Can you tell us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? On the left side, and he's wearing an orange shirt and a mask. And does the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? The record will reflect that this witness has identified the defendant. Can you tell us how long you've known Daryl Brooks? Um, since I was 15. How old are you now? 32 today. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, what's the nature of your relationship with Mr. Brooks? We have a 15-year-old daughter together. Okay. In what state did you meet Mr. Brooks? Reno, Nevada. And when did you come to Wisconsin? Um, last year, 2021, June 13th. Why did you come to Wisconsin? Um, we were coming out here. I was going to be out here for two weeks and go back, but I never went back. Who did you come to Wisconsin with? Daryl Brooks. Where did you live when you got to Wisconsin? Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, we lived with his mother, sorry. Mr. Brooks' mother? Mm hmm In what city was that? Hold on, was that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's what my job is to make sure that record is correct. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. At some point, did you uh, stop living in Milwaukee and start living in Waukesha? Yes, I did. Do you remember approximately when that timeline was? November 2nd, 2021. Okay. Where were you staying in Waukesha? The women's shelter in Waukesha. That's downtown? Yes. Okay. Do you know a person by the name of Corey Runkle? Yes. Where did you meet Corey Runkle? The women's shelter. Were you roommates? Yes. Okay. I want to direct your attention to the date of November 21st, 2021. Uh, yes. Did you know anything about a parade happening in Waukesha that day when you woke up that morning? I didn't know about the parade. Okay, what about that afternoon? Did it become apparent to you that something yes. was going on? Yes. Did you come into contact with Daryl Brooks on the afternoon of November 21st, 2021? Yes. Where did you first come into contact with Mr. Brooks? At Frame Park. And uh, how did that come about? What were you doing and why did he get there? We were messaging and calling each other all day. We were arguing back and forth. He came out there. I told him I was with Miss Corey, um, and he came out there. I told him where I was, got in his car. We drove around, and then I forgot the street. We went up that street. It's a hill. It's kind of by the Walgreens. Um, we went up that hill. We drove around. Me and him got into an altercation. He hit me in my eye. I jumped out of the car, walked, and found my way back by Frame Park. Um, and then he followed me there and then I went back in his car and I got out and I had called Corey. Well, I called Corey before that and she came to meet me. I told her that me and him got into altercation. So she met up with me and by the time she got there, um, she pulled me out the way because his car turned around. He swerved. She pulled me out of the way. He got out of his car and they got into an altercation. He pushed her in her face and I don't remember if she hit him back or anything that, but after that we walked away and walked back to the women's shelter. Okay, let's go back and, and go through some of the details of that, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you said that you told Mr. Brooks that you were hanging out with Miss Corey. Yes. Were you hanging out with Corey Runkle earlier that day? Yes, her and her friend Nick. Okay. Nick. Yes. Do you remember where you were with those two? Not too late, RJ. At the Frame Park because we had split up when I met up with Daryl. Okay. Do you remember what you were doing in Frame Park with Corey? We were just hanging out. Okay. Any alcohol involved? Yeah, a little bit. Do you remember? Yeah, like a Mike's Hard, um, the little Mike's Hard beer. Okay. Yeah. Would you say that you were intoxicated after consuming one Mike's Hard beer? No, I was not. Okay. And uh, at what point did you split up with Corey? Um, when Daryl was on his way, Corey and Nick had left. So I sat there and waited for him. We were still arguing on the phone, but I waited for him. And you were in that is interesting, Miss Santana. I didn't notice that, but at the beginning, he wasn't doing any objections with her testimony. That is very interesting. In Frame Park? Yes. Okay. How did Daryl arrive? That is, he didn't, he didn't walk to Waukesha. He drove okay. in his mother's car. It was the red, was it Ford, I believe? I'm not sure what kind of car, but it was the red. Had you seen him driving that car on previous occasions? Yes. Um, had you ever been in that vehicle before? Yes. 
when you were staying with Mr. Brooks' mother, were you staying in the house? No. Where were you staying? We were outside. Sometimes we sleep in the, that car because his mom, he, he was not allowed to, you know, be in the house. So, yes. And you slept in that car with yes. Mr. Brooks? Yes. That was before November of 2021? Yes. Okay. Um, describe for us what happened when Mr. Brooks first arrived in Frame Park when you first saw him that day. We were still arguing pretty much. He was already in a bad mood when he met up with me anyways. This is an argument that face-to-face -face using words, not messaging, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Did you get in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And what happened next? We drove around and we were arguing and that's when we got into the altercation in the car and that's when I jumped out We were up the hill. Do you remember exactly the route that the two of you took while you were driving around? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. She may answer. Yes, I do. I'm not sure the exact street names. Like I said, I'm not from Waukesha, but I do know the route. After, um, excuse me, the next day you met with Detective Steve Guth, is that right? Yes, it was the same day. Okay, and you uh, you got in the squad car with Detective Guth. Oh, that was the next day. Yes, Sorry. and showed him the route that you took with the truck. Yes, I did. Okay, all right. Um, you described going up a hill, right? Yes. Did you cross the river before you did that? No. Okay. What happened once you got up at the top of the hill? He drove up farther more, and then that's when I jumped. It was on the up the hill. It was farther more. And then that's when we, he hit me and I um, jumped out of his car. Well, his mother's car. Where were you sitting when he hit you? The passenger side front seat. Where was he sitting? Driver's side. What did he use to hit you? His hand. Was it an open hand, a closed fist? Yes. What was it? Like this, sorry, like his open hand. Okay. But it was hard. Is so it the record should reflect that the witness raised her right hand and yes. kind of waved it almost like a back slap? No, harder than that. Okay. What did you do after Mr. Brooks struck you? I cried, and then I just jumped out of the car. And then going towards down the hill, that's when he was following me. Describe how you were going down the hill. Walking down the hill. And how was he going down the hill? Driving. The red Ford Escape? Yes. Okay. What happened next? He just followed me all the way to the park. He tried to take my phone from me at the light going down the hill, and he just kept following me and arguing with me out the window. Do you recall being uh, near a gas station while this argument was happening? Yes. Objection irrelevant. Yes. Over, hold on. Overruled, she may answer, and the answer she provided may stand. Yes. It was right at the light. The gas station on the, oh, that's a gas station on the left, and then Walgreens is towards the right. And, uh, do you remember what was being said <coughs> at the gas station? I do not remember. Okay. Um, what happened when you got past the gas station? I kept walking. He was still following me. Did you at any point attempt to contact anybody for help? No, just Corey, about, but towards, towards the, um, the frame park. That's when I called her, when okay. I got closer to there. Did she answer? Yes. What did you say? I said, he just hit me, and I said, I need you to meet me, and that's when she met me. Okay. Where did you go? I walked past Frame Park, and I went, um, I met Corey, and well, I got into his car and then got back out, and I met Corey at White Rock School, I believe it is. When you say his car, you're, you're talking about who? Daryl Brooks. Okay. And uh, were you familiar with White Rock School at the time? Did you, you ever? No been there before? No. You just know that from That's talking about this afterwards? Yes, yes. Okay. What happened when you got to White Rock School? <laughs> That's when I had, because I had got there, got back in his car, talked to him, got back out, Corey had met, she snatched me out of the, um, out of the way because he swerved his car when he made a U-turn, and then that's when he got out of the car, and they were arguing, and he hit her in her face, and then I think she pushed him back, I don't recall, and then I was trying to split them up at the time, after that we just kept walking. And went to the women's shelter. Who's we? Me and Miss Corey. Uh, Madam Clerk, could we please have the state's rear table projected for the witness? Hey, what's that? 
that projected on the screen in front of you a video marked as state's exhibit number four. Do you see the screen? Yes. Have you seen this video before? Yes. Um, what does it depict or what, what's in this video? What are we going to see here? You're going to see me walking and you're going to see him um, turning the car back around and Corey meeting up with me in the altercation they had. Does this video accurately show what happened in front of the White Rock School on November 21st of 2021? Yes. Move exhibit four into evidence and request permission to publish. Any objections? Yes, uh, we haven't even played the video. How do we know what's even in the video at this point? Can we see the video before it is admitted into evidence? Your objection is noted. The foundation has been laid. Exhibit four is received. The infamous video. video. Permission to publish is granted. Shut off the poly. I think it's the polycom system that's oh, taking yeah, up the screen. Yep. Timestamp of fifty one seconds in this exhibit. Actually, can we pause quick? Paused at 1.04. And just to clarify, Ms. Patterson, we're going to watch portions of the video. We're not going to talk while it's playing. And then when it's paused, I'll ask you questions, okay? Okay. All right. Resume at 1.04. All right, let me see if I can pinpoint who everybody is. What color is Erica wearing, you guys? Do you remember? There she is. She's in the blue. He, there, okay, so he's still fussing at her or whatever. And then you're going to see Corey and Nicholas come up here on the Let's right pause. with her again. We've paused at 1 minute and 37 seconds. Ms. Patterson, uh, who did we see in the video there walking? Me. Okay. And we saw a red SUV, right? Yes. Who was driving that SUV? Daryl Brooks. Was there anybody else in the vehicle at that point, to your knowledge? Nope. Okay. Let's resume playing. I don't think she had intentions to go back to him. I think going to the women's shelter was, you know, that she was making an attempt to get away from him, you know? But I just, you can't, he's been manipulator, manipulating her since she was 15. So it's kind of like, you can't blame her for meeting up with him or whatever. It looks like she's walking across the street now. I wonder if that mother and child were headed to the parade. Okay, is that Kirby? There. there they are. That's Kirby and. At 4 minutes and 17 seconds. The two people who just entered the screen from the right, do you know who they are? Corey and Nick. Do you know which is which? Corey's on the left, Nick's on the right. Let's resume playing. Okay. So it looks like Nick's got something white on his head. Maybe a hat. Oh. I'm so smart. <laughs> okay, so she's meeting up with him now. A lot of people have said, what if they didn't meet up with her right here at this point? What would have happened to her? A lot of people don't think she'd still be here. It's speculation, but, you know. Look what he did. I don't know if he would have done what he did, though, had he not been denied Erica like he was that day. Because he had she had people on her side for once. I'm 
That's interesting, warrior woman. Good point. Okay, so they're fussing there. He's already pulled up. But then they move down the street a little bit. You can't do anything, Louise, th these days. You'll get caught on camera for everything. Oh, was she 14? She had her daughter at 15. Okay. Hey, psychic. At six minutes and three seconds. Now, Ms. Patterson, we, we watched the video, but you were there. Can you tell us what was happening during that portion of the video we just watched? Corey and Mr. Brooks were arguing, and that's when he pushed her in her face, and then she, I don't recall what she did back, and then that's when he drove off. One hey, of them, I think it was Nick, called the police, um, and that's when he drove off. Do you remember what Nick said when he called the police? I believe Nick said he had a knife, if I recall, um, but he didn't have one, but I, that's what Nick said on the phone. When you say he, who are you talking about? Daryl Brooks. And you didn't see Mr. Brooks with a knife that day? No. What about Nick? Did you see him with a knife? No. Did you have a knife? No. Corey? No. Why do you think Nick said to the police that there was a knife? Probably to make them come faster. Okay. Um, who got into the driver's seat at the end of that video? Daryl Brooks. And again, anybody in the vehicle at that point? No. Other than him? No. Let's resume playing from 6.03. Hey, JPC, I want to look that up. Rosie. Hey, Teresa. A lot of us agree with you, working man. And we can stop it there at six minutes and 54 seconds. Uh, what did we see in that clip, Ms. Patterson? I walked away from Corey and Nick because I was mad because me and her started arguing after that because she was mad that I even met up with Mr. Brooks. Okay. And then she was running after me. Do you know the direction that you were walking there? Um, straight. And then... <laughs> That's fair. Walk sorry. confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it really is. I'm sorry. Uh, towards downtown or away from? Towards downtown. Sorry. Yes, Elaine. Where did you go? After you walked off the screen here. I just kept walking until they followed me and then we made a left. I'm not sure which street it was, but we made a left. So if you're looking at the map where they were standing, the parade was kind of, it was north east of them was the way I envisioned it. I'm very, I have to visualize. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Did we you? didn't know Yeah, We just made a left turn and went straight towards the women's shelter. Before you turned off of the street you're walking on here, did you have contact with the police officer? Yes, we did. Okay. And you, you spoke briefly with that officer? Yes. And then where'd you go after you spoke with that officer? Then we left. That's when we made the left across the street and um, went towards the shelter, one of the shelter. At the moment when Mr. Brooks... Thank uh, you, working man. ...left the, the little physical scuffle that we saw there and got into the driver's seat, how would you describe his demeanor? He was angry. Okay. How do you know that? What was he saying or doing that led you to believe that? Besides the fact that he was arguing the whole time and he hit me, he was just mad. He just left very angry. He just drove off fast. He was mad they called the cops. Okay. Uh, you don't recall any specific things that he said at that point? No. Do you recall what kind of shoes he was wearing? I do not. Do you remember uh, meeting with detectives after this and saying that he was wearing blue slides? I don't recall that, okay. but I'm 
make sure I did. Can we uh, please pull up for the witness only? Exhibit five. Objection. Why is that for the witness? Oh, sorry. Recognize this photograph? Yes. Yes. And I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead there. I'm assuming that Mr. Brooks withdrew that objection. Yeah. Thank you. That was my understanding and appreciate that. Okay. Go ahead. And I believe actually Exhibit 5 has already been exhibit, uh, received and published, so I'd ask to do that again, to publish again. Permission granted. I'll put the key fob video, uh, uh, the link up. supposed to be for the witness only. The exhibit's previously been received and the state requested permission to publish it once again and it was, I granted that request. So when, just so I'm clear, when it's uh, published again, then it's? Correct. Um, when it's, when I say permission to publish granted, that means it will be shown to the courtroom and to the jury. Okay, I, I didn't understand. That's that okay. Question. Ms. Patterson, who's that in the, in the picture? That's me. And that photograph was taken the day of the parade. November 21st? Yes. The night? Yes. Okay. And what injuries uh, do we see in that video, in that photograph? That is my um, left eye that was swollen. Your left eye would have been the eye closest to the defendant uh, yeah. based on your description of where you and the defendant were sitting in the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And how did you sustain that injury? from him, Mr. Brooks, when he hit me. Uh, Ms. Patterson, did you consent in any way to being struck in the face? No. That's all I have for this witness. All right, y'all ready? All right, thank you, Mr. This Brooks. Might do you have be any triggering. questions for this witness? Uh, yes, I do. First of all, good morning. Good morning. And happy birthday. Thank you. Um, you stated that you were um, hanging out with your friend, Miss Corey, on the day of this incident, correct? Yes. Um, would it be fair to say that you were hanging out drinking? Yes. Um, would it also be fair to say that You occasionally drink too much? Objection, Ms. Moses. Sustain. Would it be fair to say that, well, let me back up. Um, what were you drinking? A Mike's Hard Beverage. Um, were you aware that um, it was said that you were actually drinking vodka? No. Hold on. When there's an objection, I need to rule on it first, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, sustain that mischaracterizes the previous testimony. Next question. So, it would be fair to say that you were drinking? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you were a little intoxicated? I was not. Uh, how much did you drink that day? One of a Mike's Heart Alcohol beverage. Thank you and so much, working man. What time man. of the day was that? I don't remember. Maybe we should watch it. Was it um, shortly before meeting up with the alleged defendant, or was it sometime before? It was before. Did you have anything to drink after? No, I did not. Um. You stated that you were engaging in a conversation with the alleged defendant uh, via the telephone. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Texas, phone calls? Yes. Um, Mike's Hard Lemonade's only like 5% alcohol. Were those texts and phone calls of, what, what nature were they of? Me and Mr. Brooks were arguing throughout the day. In the texts and phone calls? 
Yes, we were. Um, if there were, uh, if the conversation was argumentative, why would you agree to meet up with the alleged defendant? I do not know. She, she's. Um, do you recall? None of us will understand. How the the meetup was supposed to be set up? I don't recall. Did you at any time ask the alleged defendant to meet up with you? Well, I told Mr. Brooks where I was. Did you at any time ask to meet up with the alleged defendant? No, I did not. So it would be fair to say that the alleged defendant just came where you were? Yes, I told you where we were. And obviously we were gonna hang out. I never told Mr. Brooks to hang out with me. I told him where we were. So why would, if there was an argumentative conversation prior to you meeting up with the alleged defendant, why would you tell the alleged defendant where you were? Objection to Sustained. Yes, yeah, Cindy, he, she made a comment like, why didn't, why didn't they just shoot out the tires to stop him? You just stated that you really don't know the city of Waukesha, would that be fair to say? Yes. So how would you know exactly where you were? Because I was with Corey and she's familiar with this area. Would it be fair to say that Corey overheard these conversations between you and the alleged defendant? Yes, she was my roommate. She heard every conversation almost. When you say every conversation, what would that when refer she, to? When she was in the room with me, when I was always talking to so, her. It would be fair to say that you were engaged in conversation with the alleged defendant before you even left the women's shelter? Yes. And those argumentative conversations continue into your hanging out? Yes. Would Thanks, it be fair Mel. to say that that's... No. Would it be fair to say you were drinking because that's what you wanted to do? Yes. Is it true that one of the rules and requirements of being at the women's shelter is no drugs and no alcohol? Would that be fair to say? Yes, but when I really? was drinking it was at Frame Park, I was not at the women's shelter. Would it be fair to say that you knew you had to come back into the women's shelter at some point that day that they have a curfew? Yes. And I made it before curfew. Let me back up a little bit. You did state that part of the rules and requirements for being in the women's shelter is no drugs and no, no alcohol, correct? Yes, it was not in the women's shelter. That's not what I'm asking. It's part of the requirement and rules of the women's shelter, no drugs, no alcohol. Yes. Sustained. Next question, Mr. Brooks. Oh, he's going to get riled up now. Do, is there any type of drug and alcohol testing at the women's shelter? What does it have to do with anything? No. No, or you don't know? I don't know. Yeah, Would it be to fair to say her? that if it was found that you were engaging in drugs and alcohol that you might have lost your place at the women's shelter? I'll object. I don't see how this is going. Sustained. Next question. Thank you, Zach. So around what time were you hanging out with uh, Miss Corey, you said? What? I don't remember. Do you remember where you were at? Frame Park. Do you remember where in Frank Park? No. And approximately at what time did you meet up with the alleged defendant? I don't remember. Um, how long? Yeah, so I'm just going to pause it for just a second and say something. So if for anybody that's not familiar with the occurrences that had everything that happened up until this point, he had run over her early November at a gas station because she was trying to get away from him. Literally run over her. She had a boot on her leg and everything. Then when he was in jail for that, 
he kept calling her and the phone call transcripts say he was he, first he asked her to him to her to marry him and then when he she was believing him you could tell she was believing him and then he flips it around and tells her you know you can just you don't have to cooperate with the da you can tell him that you don't know it was all your fault you were the you know you did what you did and that's what happened and it was an accident and all this and that and he had her pretty much he had her going back and retracting everything and so that's kind of where we are now but he did threaten her with the fact that he knew a lot of people in milwaukee or were you um with the alleged defendant do you remember that approximately 30 35 minutes do you recall what I think so too, John Anna. Uh, well, you, you said that during this time you were with the alleged defendant that there was a arguing going on. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember what that argument was about? He was arguing with me about money because I did not bail him out. You also said that... Um, Well, let me back up from that a little bit. If you knew that the, the conversation was becoming volatile, why did you still meet up with the alleged defendant? I don't know. To your knowledge, did the alleged defendant know anything about the city of Waukesha? Yes. And what did the de alleged defendant know about Waukesha? He told me, Mr. Brooks told me that his first child's mother lives in Waukesha. Do you know that to be a fact? No, that's just what Mr. Brooks told me. <laughs> One of the lies. Or maybe that wasn't the lie. Were you, are you aware that uh, the alleged defendant, in fact, has no... Uh, mother of any child that lives in the city of Waukesha? Objection, if Mr. Brooks wants to testify, you do so in a different statement of facts. Sustained, yep. you don't need to answer that. Yes, Other than what you can recall about what the alleged defendant told you that they knew about Waukesha, um, how did the alleged defendant meet up with you in the location that you gave? He already, Mr. Brooks already knew where Flame Park was. Mr. Brooks previously had been to Waukesha plenty of times before. He's told me that. Hey, Koi. And when, when was that told to you and what conversation? Was it that day? Before that. I'm not sure which day it was. I just know he knows about Waukesha. So, would it be fair to say that he did say when that. you He's told the alleged defendant where you were, that the alleged defendant knew exactly where you were? Yes. Yes, Kimmy, there was a witness. And how would the alleged defendant know that? Because Mr. Brooks already knew Waukesha. He knew exactly where to go. Did you at any time give directions where you may have been? How could I give directions when I barely knew Waukesha myself? Is that a no? That's a no, sorry. That's okay, thank you. <laughs> <She's> a, so, sorry. <laughs> if you barely knew Waukesha yourself, where did you get the information of where you were from, where you, where you were at? I at was, the time of the conversation, via telephone. I left the women's shelter with Corey and she knows that location. She told me what Frame Park was. I didn't know the name. And you, would it be fair to say, assuming from what you just said, that you were with the alleged defendant for approximately around 30 minutes or so? Yes. And during that time, did you make uh, any disparaging remarks or anything to 
entice the argument to escalate? No. Yes, Nancy, we did a- So you didn't say anything at all during your 30 minutes with the alleged defendant? No, because I was crying the whole time because Mr. Brooks was yelling at me, arguing with me. So you said absolutely nothing at all? I was crying. Uh, Nancy, we did a, a video, a live, a live with the red beard officer that shot at him. The whole time. Did you say anything? No. Um, a few more things. No. Um, a few more questions. We see a door coming open here. <laughs> you Opening you said that uh, during this, well, once you had got out of the vehicle, as you say, um, you stated that uh, your friend, Miss Corey, pulled you away from the vehicle because it swerved. Yes, it was in the video. You do know that we just saw the video. Would that be fair to say? Yes, but there's two angles of the video. Well, we only saw one, so I'm referring to the yes, video that we saw. Corey pulled me out the way when Mr. Brooks made a U-turn. And you almost swerved into Miss Patterson, which is me. Would it be fair to say that the video does not show that? There's different angles, but the video does not show that. The video we watched. So the video that we just watched that the jury just saw, there is no uh, swerving of the vehicle and you being pulled back. Would that be fair to From say? From that far angle, you can kind of see it. Yes. Would that be fair to say? You the answer the question, Mr. Brooks. Next question. Under 906.11 sub 1 sub C, I direct your attention to that next question. Do you recall what was said during the uh, the altercation between uh, uh, was it is it Miss Corey and the alleged defendant? No, I don't remember. Would it be fair to say that you were standing right there? Yes, I just don't remember what was being said. Hey, Ren, Dad. Do you recall reporting anything that may have been said during that incident? No. Did you give a statement to anything that may have been said again, uh, during that incident? No. Was anything directed towards you verbally in that incident? Yes. Corey told, said, told Mr. Brooks, don't ever hit my effing friend again. I remember that part, that was in the beginning. Do you remember anything else that may have been said? No. Do you recall anything being said by uh, Nick to the alleged defendant? No. Do you recall the alleged defendant saying anything to Nick? No, I don't remember. You also stated that uh, right after this incident, you um, talked to law enforcement. Would that be fair to say? Yes. He makes us all At any time, RJ. did you report any, any abuse? Yes. And what did you report? That you hit me. <coughs> and you gave a statement to that effect? No, not to that police officer, but <laughs> the detectives at the women's shelter. JPC. Well, I'm referring to right during, well, oh, I don't remember. after the incident. I don't remember what I told that police officer. Just one quick second, I'm reading from the statement, if I may. You may. Yeah, just one quick statement. 
I'm going to pull up the, let me, while we're waiting on him to do that. So I did a video with their phone call transcripts, but then there's another piece to it. I think I need to add. Do you remember video. what was said by the alleged defendant when that incident ended? No, I do not remember. Do you remember uh, reporting in your statement that the last thing he said to me was F U B erase my number? Do you remember that? I don't remember. Would it be fair to say that you reported that this was said? I don't remember. Do you remember giving a statement to that effect? No. Would it be fair to say that you gave a statement? No, I don't remember. I gave a statement to the detectives at the Women's Center. So That's would it I be remember. fair? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if you done answer. Yes. All right, next question. Would, would it be fair to say that your memory is kind of cloudy of that day because you were intoxicated? No. There's a, there's a lot of things in this statement that you don't seem to remember. Is that fair to say? Really? Sustained. Next question. Would it be fair to say that you reported two different incidents? Yes. Um, do you remember the dates of those incidents that you reported? The 20th and the 21st. Would it be fair to say that there was no incident on the 20th? No. Would it be fair to say that you were initially not truthful with law enforcement? No. Do you recall uh, making a statement to law enforcement on uh, November the 22nd of 2021? I don't remember. I made this statement on the 21st of the day of the parade when I met the detectives that night. Do you recall making a second statement the next day? Or the next morning, rather, which would have been the 22nd of November 2021? Um, yes, I did, actually. Yes, I did. Do you recall what you reported that day? I told them about the 20th when I met with Mr. Brooks and all we did was argue and you hit me then too. So you reported incidents for two days in a row? Yes. Do you recall um, at any time telling law enforcement that you were not truthful and wanted to be truthful at that point? No. So you never made a statement to, to your knowledge that you fabricated a reported abuse incident? No. One second here, I'm reading from you. <clears throat> to the best of your knowledge, do you remember talking with a detective? I want to butcher this name, Your Honor. I don't know how to pronounce it. You can spell it if that's helpful. Uh, a detective, uh, B E H. R E N. Detective Barron? Is it a detective or an officer? Oh, it says detective, Your Honor. Okay, ask your question. Um, do you remember speaking with that detective? Yes. Do you remember 
which you reported to that detective? I don't remember. Um, I'm reading directly from the statement, Your Honor, if I may. Ask your question. Do you remember reporting to that detective saying you were not completely forthright with all of the information that you had given because you were afraid of you were afraid to get other people involved in your drama or your business? I don't remember that. And I'll object and move to strike based on the fact that I think I'm safe in saying that that is not from the report which the defendant is referring to. The objection is sustained. I'll move, I'll uh, grant the motion to strike by the state uh, of the question and any response that may have been elicited before I address the objection. Your Honor, quick question on that. I'm, I'm reading directly from the report. Just one second, Your Honor. Okay, I think I found Do you it. remember at any time uh, speaking with uh, Officer Guth? Yes. And do you recall on what date that was? Um, November 21st. Do you remember what you reported on November the 21st? That me and Mr. Brooks. I, went, I met with Mr. Brooks at Frame Park. Me and Mr. Brooks got into an altercation. You hit me. I jumped out of your car and I walked and met my friend Corey. You followed me. And then after that, Nick and Miss Corey, they called the police officer. And then you drove off. Just one second, Ryan. I have all the um, background stuff pulled up, so hang on. Do you recall reporting to Officer Guth that you were not completely forthright with the information that you reported? I don't remember. And no, actually, no, I did not say that. I apologize. So reading from what was reported to Officer Guth, states that what I learned from Erica Patterson was that when I spoke to her on the previous evening with Officer Garrett, uh, was that the pronunciation, Your Honor? I'm sorry. I don't have it in front of me. I'm not sure. She was not completely forthright with all of the information she had given. Would that be fair to say? What was your question? Do you recall in your reporting to Officer Guth mm -hmm. that you were not forthright with the information that you gave? No, I don't recall that. So to the best of your recollection, at any time that you reported incidents to any law enforcement, at any time do you recall being untruthful? No.
So do you remember uh, do you remember the date and time of the first incident that you allege? I don't remember the time, but it was November 20th. Do you remember what time of day that may have been? I just said I don't remember. Do you remember where you were at? Brain Park. So would it be fair to say that both alleged incidents that you are alleging happened at Frank Park. The second incident on November 21st did not happen on Frank Park. We were driving around and he hit me. What the I'm asking incident. is where you were at when you met up. Frank Park, yes. On that's both, not what you on both just alleged said. Cases. Yes. That's how Mr. Brooks knew where Frank Park is. He already knew Waukesha area in the first place. Same park? Yes. Do you remember where you were at during the in Frank Park? No, it was in the parking lot, the first side of the parking lot, kind of by the baseball field, I think that is, if that do is you, the baseball field. Do you recall who you were with? Nobody. I was with Corey on November 21st, and the first day on um, November 20th, I was by myself. So it would be fair to say that you went to, to the park alone? Yes. I met up with Mr. Brooks on, intentionally on the 20th, yes. Were you drinking that day? No. And how did you know how to get to Frank Park, as you call it? Hey, Casey. I knew how to get to Frank Park because I'd been there previous times before that with Miss Corey. Walking past it, I knew how to get there because Corey walked with me that day too. I just was not with her. She walked towards there with me. And so then you separated? Yes. Did you separate from uh, Miss Corey at any time during the 21st? Yes, I did. She left with Nick and I was with Mr. Daryl Brooks. Do you recall to the best of your knowledge that it may have been someone else that she was with that was with you that day? She was by her. Which day? Are you clarifying? Which day? Um, November the 21st of 2021. She was with Nick that day. The entire day? Yes. And you guys separated from that point? Yes. Would it be fair to say you guys separated after hanging out and drinking? Mr. Brooks, under 906.11, sub 1, sub C, you need to move on to a new topic. We've, you've been over this multiple times. It's been asked, it's been answered. Now it's under my authority under 906.11 sub 1 sub, e, sub C, you need to move on. So to the best of your knowledge, well, let me back up. How did you communicate with the alleged defendant on November 20th of 2021? Phone calls. Um, strictly phone calls, Texas? Both. Mostly phone calls. Do you remember what was said in those texts and phone Same calls? Same conversation we had on the 21st. He was mad because I wasn't giving him money from not bailing him out. So why would you meet up with the alleged defendant that day? Because I just wanted to. We have a 15-year-old together. I mean, I, I was gonna, always going to talk to you then. Do you remember if there was uh, any agreed upon meeting up that day? Yes. By you, by the alleged defendant? Both. Uh, do you remember the reason why you were meeting up? I just said why. So it would have been just to conversate? To... Just to conversate. Would it be fair to say that you could have communicated strictly by the phone? Yes. Objection. Under 906, 11 sub 1 sub C, the objection is sustained. Next.
topic if you have one, Mr. Brooks. You said that you came to Wisconsin from uh, another state. Would that be fair to say? Atlanta, Georgia, yes. June 13, 2021. And why did you leave Georgia? We were coming out here for two weeks, and I never went back. Um, can you state why you never went back? Number one, I came out here, I didn't have money. Number two, I had no way to get back. And you were always, uh, Mr. Brooks was always physical. So at any time were you ever um, offered money to go back to Georgia or did anybody at any time no. ever? No, Did anybody at any time ever uh, <coughs> lend any help to help you go back to Georgia? No. Did you, to the best of your regulation, did you want to go back to Georgia? Sustained. Next question, please. So, why didn't you file a report with law enforcement uh, of no, on November the 20th after you alleged that you were abused? Because I've been dealing with it for so many years, I just didn't do it. So, I don't see what this has anything to do with this case. It doesn't. How, how long have you known the alleged defendant again? Since I was 15. I'm 32 now. Would it be fair to say that um, you lived in different states from the alleged defendant? Yes, but I... Oh, I'm sorry, I thought there was... I was going to object to ask for a clarification on the timeline there. I'll sustain the objection, rephrase the question. I, I was going to get to that, Your Honor. Would it be fair to say that during the duration of the time, knowing the alleged defendant, that the majority of that time you did not live in the same area or state? Yeah, off, yes, off and on. I met Mr. Brooks in Reno, Nevada. I moved out of Reno, Nevada in 2017 to Atlanta, Georgia. I moved Mr. Brooks throughout. I've known him throughout with back and forth, off and on. The whole, the whole 16 years, me, me and Mr. Brooks are not together, but it was off and on. Did you guys live in the same area off and on during that time? Objection. I, Sustained. Out of the 16 years, you say it was, correct? Yes, off and on, on, Mr. Brooks. How much of that, of that time did you actually spend with the alleged defendant? Objection, Ellis. Sustained. Also under 906.11, sub 1, sub C. Move on. At the time of this alleged incident, were you and the uh, alleged defendant in any kind of relationship? Yes. And were you a couple? Were you just co-parenting? or we What was the nature of the relationship is basically? We were I together. I wouldn't have came to Milwaukee, Wisconsin if I was not with him. So it would be fair to say that you were in a committed relationship? Yes. I've got her report pulled up, and so I think what we're going to do is look at that after she's done with her testimony, and then we can look, read the jail calls transcripts. Yeah, it's basically, uh, it's a good bit, so. I'll see what I can do here for y'all. Would it be fair to say... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. Go ahead. No, there was a water bottle being provided. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. So the current trial that he's got, he's in right now, 
It's on the 31st of this month. How did... Uh, or the a hearing is. Before you came back into contact with the alleged defendant, how long had it been since you had seen the alleged defendant? I don't know, but it's years, a couple years. So it'd be, it would be fair to say that there was a significant gap in between interactions with the alleged defendant. Yes. Um, sustained, however, she provided the answer. It may stand. Next question. So during your time, uh, well, approximately how long were you uh, staying around the alleged defendant before this incident on November 21st took place? I don't know the exact time. I just answered your question on the exact time. Were there uh, any separations or gaps during that time? Sustained. At any time uh, during these alleged incidents, were you with? Someone other than Miss Corey? Corey and Nick the day of the 21st, and then we separated and I met back up with them. Any time during that day, were you with anyone else besides those two that you just named? Mr. Brooks, you. What about the alleged incident on the 20th? I left with Miss Corey, and then she went a whole different direction, and I went to Frame Park and met up with Mr. Brooks. Yeah, the 31st, we're going to find out about his new attorney being appointed. I looked at it the other day, and I didn't see any updates on the docket, so I'm assuming it's being done. But we do have a live stream set up for it, so hope you got, hopefully you guys will come back and watch that with us. Recollection, you were not drinking on uh, both of those days that you cite the 20th or the 21st. The 20th, hold on. Mr. Brooks, under 90611, I'm stopping this cross-examination. You've asked the same question, uh, multiple questions, multiple times. Um, and at this point, I'm going to declare that I didn't, I didn't the opportunity to cross is now concluded. I didn't know mm. that was the same question, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, it's been asked and answered multiple times. So with that, I'm going to turn to the state to see if they have any redirect. Some brief clarification. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Patterson, after the parade incident, that, which took place after the video we saw, right? Yes. Okay. Do you remember meeting with Detectives Jessica Barron and Steve Booth that night? Yes. Okay. And you gave a statement to them that night, correct? Yes. You gave a second statement to Detective Booth the next day. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Shut it so down, Zach. Very briefly about that first statement, the night of the 21st, mm -hmm. the night yes. of the parade incident. Yes. You told them about an incident that had happened between you and the defendant on November 20th, is that right? Yes. And you also told them about an argument that you had had with the defendant on the 21st, is that right? Yes. But you left out the part about any physical violence on the 21st, is that accurate? Yes. And then when you met with Detective Guth for your second statement yes. on the 22nd, that's when you confirmed that there had been violence with Mr. Brooks on the 21st. Is that right? Yeah, yes. Well, they seen my eye on the 21st when they came. So I did let them know about the, the incident on the 21st. I did. The next day, I let him know about the, the incident on the 20th is what happened. Okay. Right. She withheld to information <laughs> Sorry. out of fear. And that's what he's trying to make it. That's all I have, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. You may step Thank down. Thank you, Your Honor. He's pissed. 
All right, and uh, any reason to keep her under subpoena from the state? No. From the defense? Yes. Do you have a subpoena for her? Oops, she didn't um, even look at him. I, to my understanding, I was supposed to. Uh, All right, I'll take that up in a little bit. For now, I'd ask that she be maintained under the state subpoena until I can clarify that issue. Look at him. All right. He's like, what? Um, Wait. State what? have the next witness available. Yes, we do. <laughs> Mr. Brooks, please. Um, before the next witness comes in, if my ladies and gentlemen of the jury want to take a quick moment to stand. I love that he's mad. Okay, Burger. Okay, so I have a video on the key fob working, man. I'm going to put that link up in just a minute here. Look at him. He's so mad he's being ignored. He can't stand it. Okay, so before we go any further, I wanted to say, uh, my scented life, I am so sorry to hear about your chihuahua, honey. I I I love chihuahuas, and it's so hard to lose one of, one of your babies, so we'll pray for you on that. Also, RJ, honey, I'm so sorry about your results that you got on the CT scan, and uh, just know we got you, honey. We got your back, and we you're definitely on our prayer list as well, okay? Um, all right, so I have, I have these transcripts. I'm going to pull them up real quick. I've got this huge file from the PD. And this is the portion of the criminal complaint that was brought against him uh, for November the 5th. And it says that the above named defendant between November 5th and November 15th knowingly and maliciously did attempt to dissuade Erica Patterson, who has been the victim of a crime from causing a complaint, indictment, or information to be sought and prosecuted and assisting in the prosecution thereof, where the act is accompanied by any express or implied threat of force, violence, injury, or damage con contrary to section blah, 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 right? So basically, this is all part of his case that's coming up there there's a hearing on the 31st which we do have a live stream set up for that if you guys want to come back and visit us and watch that with us it the, on on the 31st they're supposed to assign him a new lawyer because he apparently i don't know if did we decide did he fire them or did they decide they wanted to pull out i, I think he fired them i'm not sure anyway so they're having to assign a new attorney so that has been delayed but we're hoping that um it, the trial happens before the end of the year. There is a date set. Um, I don't want to get too much into that, though. Let's go into this. Okay, so we're going to talk about the phone calls. It says that um, here's what happened with Erica to begin with, all right? On, the, on November 2nd, they got into an argument. And after punching her in the face, the defendant got into a red Ford Escape and drove away. She walked to a nearby BP gas station. The defendant returned and struck her again with the Red Ford, or struck her with the Red Ford Escape, running her over. As a result of the, def the defendant's actions, she suffered a dislocated femur and a fractured right ankle. Okay, so um, there was a witness to this, and there was a witness testimony and all that taken. What you guys are wanting to hear are the phone calls, right? So... On November 3rd, he called his mom, Don Woods, from the Milwaukee County Jail. And during the phone call, the defendant discussed his, with his mother that the district attorney's office would need the cooperation of Erica in order to issue charges, stating they're going to need to talk to her and need for her to be a witness. And she's not going to do that, but she can get the charges dropped altogether if she called down there and said, I didn't do what she said. The defendant further informed his mother if she don't cooperate with them, they're going to have to drop it. One day later, on the 4th of November, he called Erica from the jail again. During the call, the defendant used emotional manipulation on her in order to dissuade her from cooperating with the criminal prosecution. 
The defendant asked her, why did you do this to me? You know, I love you. The defendant continued, listen, listen, please listen. I've come to the realization that I'm not going to leave you. You, you have my daughter. I know your potential, what you can be. I want to marry you. The defendant continued by emphasizing that he and EP have a 16 year history and the defendant is not finna play no mo more. <laughs> Then the defendant asked Erica, will you marry me? Followed by the defendant telling her, you got to call them people. Okay, I need a moment because because Bruiser's being high maintenance. Okay. Um, two, and a, two and a half hours later, the defendant spoke with Erica a second time from the Milwaukee jail. And during that call, Erica asked the defendant, are you saying all this shit just because? And inquiring whether the defendant was serious about getting married. The defendant responded to Erica by telling her he was serious, but because of this situation, you know, there's a possibility I might not ever get out of prison, that I could die in prison, right? And the defendant went on to tell Erica, I'm sitting here facing up to 60 effing years. You have to keep your mouth shut. The defendant continued the emotional manipulation on her by telling her that the defendant would die in prison. Hang on. Just want to check one thing. Okay. And to think how bad that would make my mama feel. They think of much pain that would think of how much pain that would be on her. This is all stuff that you wasn't thinking about when you opened your mouth. The defendant stressed to her that when she spoke with law enforcement, she should have said, I'm telling you nothing. On November 5th, the defendant called her from the walk on a jail again. She referred to herself both in the first and third person, attempting to conceal her identity as the victim on the recorded call. Erica told the defendant, I tried. That's all I'm going to say. I talked to people and I tried. EP continued, yeah, I said everything. I said a lot. It had nothing to do with you. I said, you know, nothing happened. I said a lot. You just know. Just know that. As the call continued, the defendant pretended he was not speaking directly with Erica, stating, long as they know I'm not having anyone contact her myself, I'm not trying to get have no third-party thing. Erica informed the defendant they want her medical things, her records, and to which the defendant responded no and no, that she was to show zero cooperation. That means no. The defendant reiterated, right? Nope. I'm not giving you no medical records. Uh, she knows she needs to stand firm. She can't let these people talk her into anything. On November 6th, one day after the initial appearance was held, the defendant called her from the Milwaukee, County, the Milwaukee County Jail in violation of the defendant's no contact order with her. And during the phone call, the defendant and her discussed the law enforcement's request for her consent to access her medical records in order to establish the injuries she had suffered as a result of him running over her. The defendant told Erica, tell them, no, I'm not signing over to give you the medical record. I'm not cooperating with y'all. I'm not coming to no court. The defendant continued, once she tells them that and keep stressing that and staying firm, they got no choice but to drop the case. During the call, the defendant blamed Erica for the defendant's predicament. I hope she realizes the mistakes she made. I hope she realizes what she did. And I hope she never do anything like that stupid ever again. On November 7th, the defendant called Erica from the Waukesha County Jail. On the recorded call, Erica informed the defendant that she was not returning calls of the district attorney's office and that she informed the DA's office she don't want to see him incarcerated and that she was drinking during the incident. The defendant responded to Erica by telling Erica that's not enough. And Erica should have told them he didn't do anything. That's all that, all, that all that was made up. She, Erica responded, she did say she fell and tripped and he did not do it. In response, the defendant informed Erica she was supposed to tell them that everything was fabricated and the statement was a lie. All that. That's what she was supposed to say. During the call, the defendant said, I can't have no contact to tell anyone what to say because that's going to be bad for me. During a, a recorded call from the Milwaukee County Jail placed by the defendant, Erica Patterson, on November 8th, the defendant repeatedly blamed, blamed Erica for the defendant being charged in the Milwaukee County case. The defendant started by telling her, you don't say anything to me encouraging me at all. It is all about you. And then she responded, it's all about you right now because you know what you did too, right? And in response, he said, okay, and what do you, what'd you do to cause it? The defendant pressed further 
you trying to make it seem like everything is always everyone else's fault but yours. Like you don't never do anything to cause shit. And this whole cause of this shit was something that you effing did. The defendant ended call by telling Erica, you did this shit and you couldn't even keep your mouth shut even new after numerous people told you that shit. This ain't the place for you to be doing this shit and you still ran your mouth and I'm the one sitting here in, in here facing all this time. Erica responded, I'm the one trying to get you out, right? And you need to learn. And then he comes back and says, well, you need to learn your keep your effing mouth to shut your effing mouth. And then he goes, F you then, bitch. In a second call between the defendant and her on November 8th, the defendant stated the call, started the call by telling her, if I tell your bitch ass to call my mama ho, that's what you effing do. If that's the case, if you don't give an F about me, then I can have my family get on your ass then. And I'm in here because you don't can't keep your mouth shut. On November 11th, the defendant called his mom, Dawn Woods. And during the beginning of the call, the defendant appeared worried that he could not reach Erica. The defendant told his mother, you know, you get your, your bail money back anyway, but still, I'll make sure she, Erica, do what she says she's going to do. Because she ain't cooperating they don't have a case yep they're and then the defendant oh wait 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 i'm sorry don woods responded yeah because erica ain't gonna cooperate so they don't have a case and brooks said yep they're gonna have to throw it out during the same call the defendant's mother described erica's recantation and i hope i said that right in which erica claimed that she fell in front of the defendant's car while she was trying to pull away can y'all believe that the defendant said, why in the hell would I try to mow her down knowing I could kill her like that? On November 15th, the defendant called her, Erica, from the Milwaukee County Jail. During the call, the defendant berated her for not helping post the defendant's bail. You didn't put a cent on my bail. Why should someone else have to pay for some shit you caused? Erica informed the defendant, you tried to, but before. Before she could finish, the defendant responded, nah, I ain't trying to do that, any of that, because if I tried to do something, you wouldn't be on the phone now. That's what you're not realizing. If I really tried to do something to you, you wouldn't be on the phone now. If I would have told MFers to go do something, you wouldn't be on the phone right now. So don't tell me what I tried to do, because at any given time, it, it would be, it wouldn't be on a try. It wouldn't be, it would have been successful. Okay, sorry guys. The defendant continues, you ain't know who I am by now. You ain't know my little his friends is going to do what I tell them to do. Do you understand my people are going to move how I tell them to move? Erica responded to the defendant's perceived threats. So you're about to do all that to me. The defendant responded, do you understand that? And she said, yes, I do. In another phone call placed by the defendant to Erica, from the Milwaukee County Jail on November 15th, the defendant chastised Erica for continuing to talk with the district attorney's office. You still talk to the people. You still talk to them when they call, dumbass. You ain't supposed to communicate with them at all. And she said, I'm not. They haven't been calling. They've been emailing. And in response to the defendant, in response, the defendant told Erica, bitch, you shut your MF and mouth. You still can't humble yourself. So if you're still talking about this dumb shit, I'm going to do it for you. Either way, you're going to do it yourself and bow down, bitch, and I'm going to make you. Now, which one you, which one you want? Oh, now which one you want, he said. He threatened her, saying, you acting like you got so much MF and protection like you say. Bitch, you are my MF and turf. Remember that. On November 30th, uh, let's see. Attorney, a DA investigator met with Erica and she provided the following information to the investigators. She verified that the defendant called her while the defendant was in custody at the Milwaukee County Jail. Initially, the defendant told her that the defendant loved her on the phone calls. The defendant also made Erica feel guilty for the de defendant being in jail and charged in the Milwaukee County case. Erica confirmed being afraid of the defendant because the defendant threatened her safety and security. According to Erica, the defendant knows a lot of people in Milwaukee who the defendant could employ to harm her. During the jail calls, the defendant instructed Erica on what Erica needed to say in order to help the defendant. 
The defendant instructed Erica not to say anything, to refuse the, to allow law enforcement to access to her medical records and to not cooperate with the prosecution, including by not appearing if required. So they played a portion of some of the report, recorded phone calls referenced to above to Erica, who positively identified all the voices involved. During the above time frame, the defendant was out of custody for a $500 cash bail in Milwaukee, wherein the defendant was charged with two counts of second degree recklessly endangering the safety of others and one count of felony in possession of a firearm. That was, I guess that was the case for his uh, nephew and his mom, where he pulled a gun on all of them. Whew, so that's that part. And I wanted to read that to you. I hope I didn't lose a bunch of you guys by doing that. Um, 159 chats since I started it. Are you good, guys? All right. So let's go now to the testimony with Detective Booth. I'm sorry, Goof. <laughs> Goof. Here we go. get there please remain standing raise your right hand and my clerk Teresa will swear you in do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help you God I do thank you sir please be seated when you are seated if you would please state your first and last names for the record and spell both detective Stephen Guth s-t-e-v-e-n g-u-t-h Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Detective, what do you do for a living? I'm a detective for the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you worked for the police department? 20 years. How long as a detective? Um, seven years. Okay. Were you working as a detective on November 22nd of 2021? Yes, I was. On that date, did you meet with a person by the name of Erica Patterson? Yes, I did. What was the purpose of meeting with Ms. Patterson? I wanted to clarify her statement to me uh, regarding a domestic related incident that had occurred. And uh, as part of that clarification, did you get into a squad car with Ms. Patterson? I did. And what was the point of doing that? I wanted to um, ride in the car with her since she was unfamiliar with the geography of the city and so that she could point out to me specific directions on where she went with It is. All right, then permission to publish is granted. Can we zoom in on the top right corner of this exhibit? Okay, uh, where did you first, uh, or where did this journey with Ms. Phillips, or Patterson, excuse me, Ms. Patterson begin? Um, once I picked her up, we moved to Frame Park and we parked in the area that's um, close to that, where that star is, where it says Frame Park. In the top right corner? Correct. Okay. And where did you go from there? Um, from there, we traveled um, on Baxter. So the way that the frame, the frame Park is here, can I touch the screen? Do we have the ability to let the witness touch and yes. mark? Uh, just let us know at what points we'll capture it and then we can also print it at another location and if need be. <laughs> so we met generally in that area that's highlighted now in yellow. And we traveled in this direction on Baxter. Okay. And then what? Uh, as we continued down Baxter, we got to the street called Buckley. And then from Buckley, we made a right turn and ended up on Carina. Uh, let's go, go back up. Yeah, don't look at the screen until we can capture it. Let's capture there. Uh, and we probably need to. If you saw the little number counting the percentage, that means it's done capturing it. Once it's. Okay. 
Can we clear that now? Yeah. And let's zoom out. I'll refer, we'll get that printed and we'll have that marked <coughs> as 1A. Okay. Now, from where you left off there, after you made that right turn on the Buckley, can you, can you draw on the screen where you went next? Yeah, so again on Buckley, we did travel down Buckley to Carina. And then on Carina, we made a left turn traveling along the river till we reached Barstow. And then from Barstow, we made a right turn traveling up northwest Barstow all the way to the Barstow Hill, where it's highlighted in green there, up the Barstow, Barstow Hill, and it's going to come off the map, but all the way up to Bidwell. And did she indicate at what point you should turn around? Uh, at Bidwell and Northwest Barstow. Did she indicate where she went with Mr. Brooks after that? Well, she jumped out of the car at Bidwell and Northwest Barstow. And what happened, according to Ms. Patterson, at that point? Um, at that point, she started making her way back the same path, uh, back to Frame Park. Um, again, because she was unfamiliar with the geography, she just used the same route that she just went. Did she at any point mention uh, a gas station on that route? Yes, she did. Do you see that gas station depicted on Exhibit 1? Yes, I do. Can you tell us where it is? Yes, it's the mobile gas station highlighted with a star, and I'll circle it in that area. Do we have a screen capture here? Yes. The screen capture has been done when we uh, get that color print brought to the courtroom. That will be area. Do we have a screen capture here? Yes. The screen capture has been done when we uh, get that color print brought to the courtroom. That will be 1B. Okay. And uh, this map is from, you're familiar with Waukesha, right? Yes. This is an accurate map of Waukesha? Yes, it is. And the markings that you put on the screen here, that's an accurate uh, representation of the route you took with Ms. Patterson on November 22nd? Yes, it is. Move exhibits 1A and 1B in evidence. Any objection? Yes. The objection noted it's overruled. Exhibits 1A and 1B are received by the court. That's all I have for this witness. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Uh, yes, I do. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Officer Lee was a state witness. Detective. Sorry about that. Good morning, uh, Detective Luke. Good morning. Um, you've uh, been in law enforcement for over 20 years. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Um, at any time during your over 20 years of service, um, have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. Can you state for the record if the plaintiff is in court today? Objection. Sustained. Have you ever seen the plaintiff? Objection. Sustained. Do you even know of the plaintiff? Objection. Sustained. Ever spoken to the plaintiff? Objection. On what grounds? Sustained. On what grounds? It's sustained. Next question. May I ask what grounds you're in? Mr. Brooks, do you have another question? I do. I, I was just trying to follow the rules that you said by saying that a, an objection has to have a, a basis. So Unless just, it's self-evident to the court. It's sustained. Next question. On what grounds you're on? Do you have another question? Otherwise, under 906.11, um, I will give the state an opportunity to ask any redirect. Yes, I do have more questions. Go ahead. At any time, did uh, Erica Patterson uh, report any um, domestic incident to you? Yes. Do you remember um, uh, the dates that she reported? 
for a date? Yes. You didn't miss much, Lisa. Well, At you missed a good bit. That, uh, You'll have to rewatch the rest later, but report. Did you good, find just uh, got on the stand? No. Good night, RJ. Pray for you, honey. Just one second. reading from the narrative of uh, your report and specifically the part where it says what I learned from Erica Patterson was that when I spoke to her on a previous evening with Detective Barrett she was not completely forthright with all of the information she had given would that be fair to say correct so would it also be fair to say that from the report Lucy that you wrote that you're acknowledging that there was some untruth in the report reported to you. No, that's incorrect. I love how Goof just stands up to him here. When I spoke to her on the previous evening with Detective Barrett, she was not completely forthright. You said what you learned was that she was not completely forthright. So is it fair to say that there was some untruth to the report. No. So why would that be in the report? For various reasons. The most common reason is that when domestic victims report crimes that happen to them, a lot of times they're very afraid of their abuser. And so they don't always give all details because if they do give all details about what happened to them, they feel like they might have something happen to them in a future date from that same abuser. So would it be fair to say that you could have just stated what you just said in your report? I did state that. <laughs> Not in the report. Would it have, would, is it fair to say that obviously you, you've been in law enforcement for a very long time? Is that a question? Would it be fair to say that it could have re been reported in the way that you just stated instead of stating in your report that there was untruthfulness? I didn't state untruthfulness in my report. If you further read in, into the report, I state what I just stated. So would it be fair to say, though, that there, the information wasn't completely forthright? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, would it be fair to say that there, um, was in fact only one incident? No. And would you be basing that, to the best of your knowledge, would you be basing that answer, the last answer, on hearsay? No. So you, you would be basing your um, eyewitness account? All checked out. Relevant support. Grounds. Okay. I'm going to sustain the objection. Next question, or you can rephrase it. <coughs> would it be fair? I don't 
don't know how I can rephrase that without asking it the same way, Your Honor. Just give me a second, if I may. At any time uh, during your um, report or time spent with Ms. Patterson, Did she state um, where she may have been on November 20th of 2021? Yes. Do you recall what that was, where, what she said? I recall what she said, yes. To the best of your knowledge, do, do you believe that she was being truthful? Yes. I'm just going to advise the jury that ultimately it's the jury's determination of credibility that matters. Um, and you heard me read an instruction yesterday. That's obviously the instruction you'll follow ultimately in the jury room. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall um, any injuries on the first reported incident? Yes. Do you recall what they were? Yes. And do you recall any injury on the reported incident from the day of the parade? Yes. Do you remember what they were? Yes. Can you state on the record what they were? On which day? The 20th. Her mouth was injured due to being slapped in the mouth. Do you? Hmm. They are painful, Can aren't they? Yucky, yucky. For any reason why that would not be in the report? It is. <laughs> it's Julie. It's like, it's like pulling teeth. Trying to get in to answer a question. I love it. To the best of your knowledge, can you? Oh, thank you so much, Lumfundo. Can you say where in the report that would be? Because I don't see it in the um, report that I have here before me. Are you asking me which report states that she was injured in the mouth? I agree, Shannon. Are you asking if it was reported to me that she was injured in the mouth? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, why is there no injuries reported for that incident, alleged incident? It was reported to me that she was injured in the mouth by being slapped on the 20th. Are you aware that that was not testified to? No. Hold on. What grounds would that be here, Mr. Around? Brooks, it's up for the oh, jury to too. determine the truthfulness of anything that's said or testified uh, okay. to in court. Okay. He was not present for any other testimony, so it would not be proper for him to comment on that. Next question. You're so sweet, Mom Linda. Would it be fair to say that the reported alleged incident? Keep skipping. Would it be fair to say that the reported alleged incident from the 20th is very, very vague in your uh, report? Would that be fair to say? And by vague, I mean there's literally three sentences. <laughs> I don't have the report in front of me if you're I have referring to vagueness, 
That's why I went back on the 22nd to interview her again to clarify information. So, uh, on the 22nd. Okay, dread. <laughs> and this is your report I'm reading from. It says, due to the influx of information, we were unable to make sense of all the information. Would that be fair to say? Correct. So, it would be also fair to say that that would basically state that there were some things you weren't sure about. Yes. You also say in your report that you had learned uh, had learned that there were two other individuals um, that may have been involved in the incident. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you remember the names of the two individuals? Yes. Would you state on the record what the names of the other two individuals were? Corey Runkle and the other individual's first name is Nick. I don't remember his last name. Did uh, Corey Runkle in any way report uh, anything about the incident to you? Not which incident? Hold on. Which incident are we talking about? Um, from November the 21st of 2021. Thank you. With that clarification, are you able to answer? Not to me directly. Do you recall if you had learned of any information about uh, what Corey Runkle might have said to any other law enforcement? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Yes. Would you like to state on the record what that was that you may have learned? <laughs> I learned that she was with Erica Patterson on the 21st, on November 21st, 2021, when she was, when Erica Patterson was being, was involved with a domestic incident. She responded to help her friend. Um, do you recall of uh, learning if Corey Runkle was with Erica Patterson on November 20th of 2021? I don't think Eric, I don't think Corey Runkle was with Erica Patterson on the 20th. state in the report that um, you were with um, Erica Patterson to kind of uh, basically you took her on a drive to pretty much um, retrace her steps. I, would that be fair to say? Yes. At any time, did any incident about November the 20th of 2021 come into your conversations with Erica Patterson? You're talking about during the drive. During the drive. I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. No, I just want to make sure that the question's clear. Go okay. ahead. I believe we did talk about it, um, both incidents from the 20th and the 21st. Do you recall what was said? Yes. Do you recall putting that into your report? I recorded our conversation. I don't know if I put every detail of our whole recording in the report. Would in be? fact, I know I didn't. So not every detail from our recorded conversation is in that report. The report is a summary. For any reason to your knowledge, why would uh, details of the incident not be reported accurately. Objection that mischaracterizes the evidence. It's also vague. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, 
Why is that conversation What'd not you supposed just do? to be not in your report at all? KC, you did another membership? Stacey the Evans. Sustained. Thank you, honey. Just one second. Who got it? Sorry, Your Honor, I got tons of paperwork. Did I, did... <coughs> you guys. Just one second, Your Honor. One second. Wait. Bama got it? And you stated that you interviewed Ms. Patterson on multiple days. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Baja. And on both of those times that hey, share. you interviewed Ms. Patterson, did the reporting ever deviate? Mr. Brooks, under 906-11, you need to clarify your question. Thank you so um, much, Casey, for that membership. It's confusing. What I'm, what I'm getting at by that question is, did what Ms. Patterson said change from interview to interview? No. So at, so at any time... So at any time during your interview, did you learn less or learn more? I learned more in my second interview. So it would be fair to say that the information you learned changed. Would that be fair to say? Objection. I'm overruled. He may answer. It did not change. I just gained, learned more information. More information about what alleged incident, the 20th, the 21st? Both, Both. honestly. What kind of snake okay. that you share? Both, honestly. So, would it be fair hey, to say, with, was it two interviews that you did or three? Two. So, with both interviews, you continue to learn things that you didn't know from the previous interview? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Oh, Would it be fair thank to you, say Bama. That? Would it be fair to say that? Oh, Zephyr. Thank you, Zephyr. Just one second, Y'all both. You both did, <laughs> did a membership. Thank you so much, guys. Share, a moccasin bit you share? Oh my goodness, girl. Where are you? Where do you live? Brooke says he hasn't gone through all the discovery, but he says he doesn't have the rap video. Another lie. Yeah, so right, David? Your, um, knowledge. Did Erica Patterson give any report to any other law enforcement that you were aware of? No. Georgia. Oh, my gosh. You're so, so to lucky. The, to the best of your knowledge. Oh, Bama. You were the only detective that interviewed Ms. Patterson? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. Who got yours, Zephyr? To the best of your knowledge, were you the only one that interviewed Ms. Patterson? Same objection. Nicole. Sustained. At any time, did you learn anything about the alleged incidents that Ms. Patterson claimed from any other law enforcement? Objection. Same again. Sustained.
at any time where you um or at any time did you view the uh video footage from white white rock school yes do you remember what you saw in those videos yes you stayed on the record what you saw under 90611, I'm going to advise the witness not to answer that video is in evidence. It's, it will speak for itself. Um, and his understanding that's in there, uh, at least at this point, uh, is not relevant. Can you say what uh, was the date of the video that you saw? November 21st, 2021. I don't think you looked at any of the video evidence either, Kimmy. <laughs> Did you see any video from the other alleged incident from November 20th? I'll object. I don't see the relevance to anything that happened on the 20th. He's opening that door again, Sustain. huh, Miss Santana? It's almost Do you know done. know if there might have been any video from the alleged incident over on November 20th? Sustained. Grounds. It's not relevant. My ask, how is it not relevant? Next question. There's not a charge related to the 20th, sir. It's not relevant. I've given you leeway to ask questions at this point under 90611. Just, Move on. Just so, just so I'm clear, you have never had any, any interaction NT? with the plaintiff. Sustained. Sustained. You've never With seen the plane. Sustained. Never spoken to the plane. Objection. Sustained. Move on. Just so, just so I'm clear, you have never. I don't know why it's jumping like that, y'all. I apologize. Interaction with the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. You've never seen the plaintiff. Objection. Sustained. Never spoken to the plane. Objection. Sustained. Never seen. Uh, do you see the plaintiff in court today? Objection. Sustained. Do you know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? <laughs> Have you had any that. prior knowledge of the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustained. Oh, my goodness. Substain. <laughs> Lots of substains. Would it be fair to say that you know you do not know of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Sustain. On grounds, what grounds? Under 90611, I'm declaring the cross-examination now closed. Do you have any redirect for this witness? Boom. Briefly, Your Honor. Thank Here you. we go. Detective, when you reported that Erica Patterson had been uh, less than completely forthright with you, what did she leave out the first time you spoke with her? She left out the incident that happened to her on November 21st, 2021. The incident where she accused Mr. Brooks of punching her? Correct. Okay. You testified on cross-examination that in your general experience, victims of domestic violence uh, do not report 100% of the details all the time. Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Grounds. He hasn't asked a question yet. <laughs> he can ask this question. This witness testified about his experience based on the question you asked. So the, cross, the redirect is appropriate. May Go I ahead. just say that every situation is different, Your Honor? No, you may not. Which You're we do know that. Testify, so no, he may not say that. The jury will strike that comment made by Mr. Brooks. You'll have an opportunity, if you so choose, to testify at a later point in time in this trial. Yeah, the state you could. May the whole state. It's question. The whole state. Thank you. Did Erica Patterson provide to you a specific reason wow. for her situation? why she was not 100% forthright with you? Yes. What was that reason? She was extremely afraid of Mr. Brooks. Thank you, I have no further questions. All right, thank you. Uh, detective, you may step down. Any reason to keep this witness under subpoena from the state? Not from the state. Anything from Mr. Brooks? Yes. All right, I'll take that up later and reserve that. <laughs> okay, until I we'll wait review that with the parties all right this would be an excellent opportunity to take a mid-morning break it's 10 49 um, about 15 minutes all rise for the jury we are in recess he's 
pissed because she said, we'll take that up later. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, so those of you that came in late, I'm going to play the COVID result, which is actually, it's technically right after this. So here we go. Let's add that in. I just got to rewind it because we were playing it earlier. Or I got to find the spot. I forgot exactly how far in it was. I think it was three minutes. Yeah, it's three minutes in. Mr. Brooks, I was provided with information that your test result was hand delivered to you, folded. Did you receive that? Uh, I was made aware of, of my test. I didn't look at it yet, so. Do you have it with you? It is, it's in my paperwork somewhere. All right, I need you to uh, locate it. And open it up, please. Um, may I ask the reason why that would be? Mr. Brooks, you raised this issue yourself, and I'd like to know um, the result. I would, too, but I was kind of in the middle of preparing for my defense. so I... Mr. Brooks, find the piece of paper and open it up and read it, please. I don't know I don't if that's true or not, Stephanie. Being talked to in that fashion. <laughs> You're... Lack of consent is noted for the record. Please find the piece of paper, open it up, and please read it. I will not consent to that, Your Honor. Or do I agree to that, Your Honor? I do not. Mr. Brooks, then I'm going to advise the Sheriff's Department to find the piece of paper and hand it to me so that I can read it. And so that those are your two options. What would be the basis for that, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, this is an issue that you raised, and I need to bring it to finality and know what the test result is. Okay, with all due respect, it was uh, a motion that I raised. All right, um, I'm gonna clear the courtroom. We're gonna go off the record and uh, we're gonna find that piece of paper and I'm going to address it when that's done. Yeah, I'm scared as hell, Your Honor. And now he's got the results. He doesn't wanna open them. Okay, hang on, it's about one minute. by here it is excuse everyone from the courtroom take a recess so that the test result could be obtained and if necessary by reasonable force um, it's my understanding there was some type of situation or altercation between mr brooks and the deputies um, ultimately, though, I think he was taken into the bullpen. He was brought back out, but it was very clear to me that he was upset. Um, I think understandably so, uh, but um, I needed to make a record of what was being done, uh, including that I have obtained the test result, uh, so that there's an accurate record in this case uh, related to the motion that was raised previously by uh, Mr. Brooks. I want Mr. Brooks to know that I am not um, removing him from uh, when the jurors are brought back in. It was just simply because he was upset. Um, he was um, very loud when I walked into the courtroom before going on uh, back on the record. Um, he was uh, yelling about his constitutional rights being violated. Um, I advised him that if there was any type of use of force that he wanted to complain about, he could certainly do that through the proper channels uh, with the sheriff's department. But just given his state of agitation and my need to make a record, um, I had him taken to the other courtroom. He is currently muted. I do not intend to go forward uh, with additional testimony. Ultimately, I'm going to take an early lunch break because of this. Um, but I will make a record of the following. I have the result. Um, I am going to scan it, have my clerk scan it. It will be filed as confidential, though. It won't be available to the public. Uh, but I, it's there for appellate purposes. But I can confirm that the test result for COVID-19 was negative. And again, I required uh, the Sheriff's Department to provide that result to me. Um, and it was, and it will remain under seal. I realize I'm disclosing that result, but I feel obligated to do that given the motion that was raised two days ago by uh, Mr.
Brooks. Again, I do intend to take an early lunch, uh, so that will hopefully give Mr. Brooks an opportunity if he so chooses to review the result himself. It was put in front of him. I did see that he either shoved it or tossed it or just dismissed it. It looked like it went on the floor uh, when it was put in front of him, but we'll certainly have the deputies give that to him again. During the recess for lunch, uh, Mr. Brooks will also be given the opportunity to change into street clothes if he so chooses. But when we come back, he will be in this courtroom. I agree. Uh, Mr. Brooks was making a couple of statements about how he was abiding by the rules and being respectful, things of that nature. I agree. He's done an excellent job while in court here this morning. He's been respectful of the rules. Um, he made some um, early on. I let him, you know, make his con uh, objections or lack of consent. Um, he did that respectfully. Um, when I said I was moving on, he generally was able to do that. We were able to get through two witnesses. He was able to follow along, ask cogent, clear, um, responsive, and articulate objections. He was able to elicit uh, information from the witnesses um, regarding either their memory, their credibility, um, and other things. Um, generally speaking, he's um, been able to competently uh, represent himself and provide, uh, again, solid cross-examination this morning. So I'm going to give him an opportunity to hopefully settle back in and to come back here um, when we return from lunch. So with that, we are in recess. Uh, probably come back at 1 o'clock since it's only 11.30 and we'll take the full 90 minutes for lunch today. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you. And with that, we'll, we will let Tim's comment be the last one up. The COVID con is over. Y'all wanna see him cry one more time? All right, thank you everyone. Thank you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that a great way to leave? Oh my goodness, Linda. Linda just gifted five memberships. Oh my goodness, you guys. Y'all are amazing. Wow. Okay, y'all have to tell me you got them because it doesn't tell me over here on, on StreamYard. That is so kind of you, Linda. Well, you guys, thank y'all for being here with me today. I appreciate you so much. We've been on for over two hours, which, you know, I think that's a nice little, little bout of time. <laughs> Such a sad baby boy. He is. No, Russ, those tears are definitely not for the victims. Those tears are because we watched this earlier. And like I said, he got triggered. He got triggered by Erica earlier. And then he got triggered by Duro actually giving him a compliment about his capabilities. And he, and he just, he felt defeated. Oh, thank you, Miss Patty. Y'all are so nice. He's, and I think maybe at that point, that's when it hit him. He's like, he doesn't have Erica. She's gone. He's got one person and that would be his mother. And well, we know how his life turned out, so. Did you need it, Elaine? Well, we're glad. So glad you were here with us. Zephyr, I'm not, I promise. What are you doing, Zephyr? What are you up to, Zephyr? Yes, give a big prayer um, for RJA, you guys, if you don't mind, if you'd add him to your prayer list. And Cher is healing from a dang moccasin bite. Holy crap. I just, that blows my mind because Cher, we grew up around the, the lake there were, and there was moccasins everywhere in Alabama. And um, they're, to me, they're just, they, they're terrifying. Snakes are terrifying. Yes, my sin in life, honey. I wanted to say, we send out a prayer for you too, baby, because you lost your, your, um, your baby chihuahua. I'm so sorry, honey. I'm sorry, use not abuse. Use not abuse. Oh, I like that name. Holy Hannah Snakes. Yeah. 
You got one, Stephanie Lee? Yay. Marilyn, you got one too, didn't you? Oh, you're from Montgomery, Marilyn? Yeah, I'm down in Mobile. I'm, I'm, I'm in LA, lower Alabama. Oh, and we'll add, also, we always have to add to the prayer list, those that over in the Israel and the Palestinian area, Gaza, everyone that's being affected by all that. It's just really, really sad. Hey, Omi, Omi. Oh, Numfundo. Okay. I can't believe Numfundo hadn't been gifted one as much as you're in here. Okay. So at the bottom where you can go, I think if you go to the bottom of the chat, somebody help me out here. You go to the bottom of the chat and isn't there like a place where you can put like emojis or is there a dollar sign or something there too? There's a join button. You can go to, I know you can go to the front of my channel. Like if you just click on character productions anywhere on, around the video, it'll take you to the main page of my channel and you'll see the join button there in, in that area. Love to have you as a member of the Kiki and He 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 and Club. And Brooksaholics Anonymous. You can't do it on your iPhone. That, see, I heard that too. You got to go to a browser. The judge just realized she said, Linda's watching late. <laughs> She's on rewatch. Y'all are so funny. It will, Patty says, Nimfundo, it will say perks and click on that under the perks. You're so welcome. I appreciate you guys all for being here. And um, if I don't do another live tonight, then I will definitely do one uh, tomorrow morning again. So, oh, Marilyn was able to do it from her iPod pad. That's awesome. Bruiser, Bruiser was asleep, you guys. He was so noisy earlier. I had to put myself on mute for the longest time. All right. Y'all be good. Take care of one another. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.